Okay. Um, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is Keep the Flame Alive with Jacques Pai Sensei. Uh, before I bring Jacques Pai Sensei on, I would like to reiterate a couple of things. One, my rules for this interview or discussion is, is like two friends talking. So one rule is I will ask the hard questions and I will push it. But I, second rule, I will never be disrespectful to the subject matter or to my guest. And third, I want to have fun and my, my guest too. So those are my three rules. So if you think I've ambushed anyone in the past or been hard, uh, think again, I have a relationship with everyone I've interviewed so far and I'm comfortable in what I've said. Okay, cool. Uh, remember, if you have any comments or whatever, uh, throw them on. If there's a chance, I'll throw it to Pai Sensei. Okay, if you do Yoshinkan system, in the, if you do the Yoshinkan system of Aikido and have been doing it for a while, and you don't know the name Jacques Paye, you need to do some research. You really need to do some research. This man is an icon. He's a stalwart of Yoshinkan Aikido. And uh, Jacques Paye Sensei, welcome. Thank you for being my guest. Well, thank you, Hello, Joe Sensei. Very happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. Um, people, we're going to be talking about Jacques Paye Sensei's book. Oh, geez, sorry. Oh. Uh, sorry, that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jack Pai Sensei's book, Uchideshi, Walking with the Master. Now, before we talk about the book, can you tell us what you were like as a child growing up in Reunion, what it was like? And most people don't even know Reunion Island. Yes, that's uh, it's a very yes. tiny, tiny island here in, in the Indian, Indian Ocean, near Mauritius, Madagascar, Mauritius. Yeah, so uh, I think I was uh, not built to become a... Uh, to do martial arts or things like that because when I was, I think, 11, I wanted to be a priest. So my parents took me in a seminary and after one month I escaped. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but uh, I think I've got into some fight at uh, school and I was um, beaten. So I thought I was not, it was maybe I had to do something to. Uh, to train myself, so I look for um, for a dojo somewhere. But in Reunion, there was no no judo or karate or anything. So um, I had to wait until I go to university in Fran in France, and I started uh, karate and I did some kung fu, some jiu jitsu. Yeah, I got a, I got some a black belt in jiu jitsu. I think I had yeah. And so in 1980, Jacques Pai Sensei went to uh, Japan. Yeah. Um, uh, of of Pai Sensei's book, he saw a picture of uh, a video of Kancho Sensei, and he seeked seeked him out. So, can you tell us a little bit about? Uh, I, I don't want you to give away anything about yeah. the book. Let yeah. everyone buy, buy the book, you bastards. <laughs> uh, we want to talk in general terms. So yeah. can, can you tell us what drew you to the Yoshinkan and Shoda Gozo Kancho? Yeah, I was doing Jiu-Jitsu. So for me, I didn't want to do Aikido. Because Aikido, I had the weak image. You know, this uh, Aikido for me was was for the weak people. So Jiu-Jitsu will look much more uh, uh, manly. So, and but I saw in a, a little little guy who was uh, playing with a lot of bigger, bigger person. And it looks sort of uh, little like magic or thing like that. So I, I didn't believe really, but I thought I, I would go to Japan and check it out. And that I would say, I, and actually I, when I went to Japan, because there was no internet or anything. So I thought it was a Jiu-Jitsu guy because uh, the, the eight minute movie I saw was in Japanese. So I, go, I, I, I just the name was in, uh, in, uh, in English. So I, I went to Japan to study with him, but I thought he was Jiu-Jitsu. And I just, when I found out after, uh, actually it took me a month to find the, the, the home dojo. And when I found out, I found it was Aikido. So, but I think I came for Shoda Gozo really. So um, I think if, if it was karate or he was Judo or something, I think I would have done that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for, for people, all you newborns, yeah. In 1980, there was no internet, no Google search, nothing. No. Uh, there were no signs in English in no. Japan. No. Uh, I, I went to meet someone and they said the north exit of the station. 
it wasn't there, not even yeah. in Romaji. And everything there was, was everything was in Kanji or Romaji or, or no, no Romaji anywhere like today. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, no, 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 nothing. And, and that's why it would have taken as long as Pai Sensei did to find Shoda Gozo Kancho. So it's it, not like now, not like no, now. No, no, yeah. no, no. And just for you young people, we used to write letters home yes. one week or so to get that letter home, turn around, we get a reply three weeks later, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. For me, for me from, from Japan to Reunion, it would take um, five weeks to get the letter away and five weeks back. So I didn't get uh, any news from my family for two months. Yeah. Okay. So look, in, in 1983, I went to Tokyo and I went to the Koganai Dojo and that's when I met Pai Sensei. Mm -hmm. And he helped me around. He showed me around, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, when I read the first few pages of the book, mm -hmm. and Pai Sensei described walking to the dojo past the baseball field and the high school, and I don't have any hair, but if I had hair in the back of my neck, it stood up because I could <laughs> picture it. I yeah. could picture it. Um, Pai Sensei, you, you. You know, in your book, you talk about being an uchideshi, yeah? Mm -hmm. But for me, it was as much about the building as the people. Yes. So what was so special about the Koganai Dojo? Well, first, it's, uh, it was unique in the sense that it's, it was not... It was the same thing that you, you train, but you live there all the time. Okay, you get into the dojo, you're always in dogi. And uh, and you, and it's you can't you can't really never relax really because there's so it's always a, a senpai or someone around and uh, and and so so there's no difference between your your life and 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 the training or the, everything is training and everything is there so the dojo itself it's 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 not it's a building and it's uh, uh, all the things you do inside and uh, it's a living thing. But for me, it was a special place. And, you know, you spent three years there. I, I only spent three months, but it was three of the best months of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave Rubens, sensei, see if you agree with this, said something in an interview. He said, if you see 100 people on the mat doing Yoshinkan Aikido, you can pick mm -hmm. the ones who trained in Kogane. Yes, I think so too, yeah. Yeah, yeah because... Uh, you know, it, 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 Kogane was a survival. It's not, you You get up in the morning and you don't know if you're going to make it the day, the, the, or the day around because, yeah. you know, it was really tough. Yes, yeah. And I, I'm so glad that you mentioned the Ishihara family in your book. Ah, yes, yes. They, they were, can you? Yeah, because, because you know, we were all young, we lived there and uh, we were treated as, like, shit, you know, like very hard every day and uh, yell at every day. So they were the only, and no, and uh, we were young and no, we had no family around. So they were, they were really our, our father and mother, they were the family. So we would just, when we were tired or we was, you know, lonely or whatever, we would just go there and just talk to them. And, uh, you know, they would, they would uh, all be, all be, always be there for us. So it was very important people for us. So I have a question here from a good friend of yours and mine. And he yeah. says that the, the, the days you talk about, not just Kogane, but the life of Enuchi Deshi, uh, doing the Kidotai course, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Uh, he said it was really hard. And, but yeah. do you have to go through that to be good at Aikido? I think there's two things. There's, I, to be honest, I think I didn't learn any Aikido at Kogane Dojo. I mean, but I learned the, I learned the Yoshin, the spirit. Because uh, it's always, uh, it's not easy. You have to strive every day. You're afraid. There's already always electricity in the air. And you're always on your feet. And, uh, and, and that, that's where it creates something, a very strong spirit. So you, that's why, that's why you know, like you mentioned many times, that's why people who, who were there, they don't give up. And if you kill them, they would stand up. Mm. 
Okay, that's that's very hard. Uh, that very hard feeling and spirit that built built in Kogane Dojo. But I don't I don't think I learned really Aikido there. I learned I learned the form. I learned uh, to do very strong movement and things like that. But I think that's not Aikido. It's not for me. It's, I didn't learn Aikido there. So, to carry on with your question, so do you need the Kihon Dosa and the Kihon Waza to do good Aikido? I, I think it's help, it helps a lot because it's, uh, it, it's, it's really the, the, the basement, the base. So you have, you have to build a very strong base. But, but I think for me, there's two things. Is, first is physical thing. You have to, uh, you have to do the, at the Kogane, I think you, you don't give up. So you have to do, to stay very low and you have to do hours of Kyoto science and that. So you build up strong legs, some muscle and it's a very strong will. And that's very, really, that's uh, very, very important. But after that, you have, when you have that, you have to really start to throw that away and start again. I mean, because everybody says Kion Dosa is very important, but who really knows why it is important? Who, what is really important? Why is it important? Okay. And you have to, to throw away what every single that and start again and do you and find out why by yourself and find your own your own your own explanation of that. And that's the hard time. That's the hard work, I think. And if you don't do that and you just copy what you, what your teacher told you or, or what you've learned before, you you end up, you know, doing doing something that you know it would be difficult for you to progress, I think. Okay, so now I had, I was saving this question for later, but you opened the door on it, yeah? Um, okay. The, the subheading on your book. Yeah. Learning what cannot be taught. Yeah. Would you mind explaining that? Because I, I have a couple of questions about that. Okay, okay. Well, I think it's, it's, it's easy to, 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 to learn what you've been taught. Okay. And that's, that's what is that the first stage. You have to listen to trust your teacher and do everything he does and just do things. But after that, you, you have to learn what, what he's not saying, what is not, what is not taught. For example, for the, me, I learned, I learned most of, of my, of my kiddos through watching Shuda Sensei. How we walk, how we interact with people. Uh, that's that's really where I, I learned my Aikido. Not through not through the not not just by repeating the movement or technique. Mm. So for me, it, uh, learning kind of thought, it, learn how, how how to to teach yourself, how to uh, how to 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 find really what's very important and what is not cannot be explained, cannot be taught. So, d have you heard of this term autodidact? Autodidact? Yes. Ah, yes. yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Learn yourself, right? Yes. So, for people who haven't heard that term before, I think it's Greek mm -hmm. or Latin, I'm not sure. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it means someone who is self taught. And yeah. uh, it, uh, yes. And also, it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a shoe hardy of, of, you know, the, the traditional training. So, First, you, you just you just do what you, you've been told, and after that, you start to think about why you're doing these things, and after you discard everything and you rebuild. So I think if, if you don't go to this process, it's very difficult to, to really get somewhere. Okay, so uh, my girlfriend said any Japanese terms have to be explained. Okay. Uh, people, um, shu, uh, shuhari is the traditional way of learning. Yeah. Shu means to study mm -hmm. or to learn. Ha is to master, re is to forget. Yes. And that's the natural progression of learning. Uh, the, the, we, can, we can write whole books on that, but we won't go there. <laughs> now, um, going back to, to learning what cannot be taught. Yeah. I think that anyone who is good in anything mm -hmm. is self-taught. Is what? Is self-taught. Yes, I think so too. Uh, you... You saw Master Sensei uh, last year when we were together. Yes, he's different. He's doing his own thing. Um, yeah. 
you know, Shida Sensei is different, Takino Sensei is different, you are different. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're all different. And But if if we are product yeah. of the same school, then we'd be the same, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. But because we are perhaps all yeah, same. But, yes, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, but 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 again, but, but yes, because we have this set form, but also because we did the work, we we tried by ourselves to understand what 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 was behind these things. We, we didn't just took that as as uh, you know as as because your, your teacher told us. We we found out by ourselves. And uh, people, I think what to just to elaborate on what Pai Sensei says, yeah. Um, when when you train in the Yoshinkan in the old days, you discovered a lot about yourself. Yes. And why are you you don't remember this, but one of the first things Pai Sensei told me when I went to the dojo, he said, "Don't lie." I said, "Well, what do you mean?" He says, "Don't lie because the truth will come out on the map." And I'm thinking, "What are you talking about?" But it was true. He he explained later. He said, "When you're tired, when you train with the police, when you're training six hours a day." Your character comes out. Whether when you're hurt, whether you care about yourself only or other people, your true character really reveals itself. And I think that is part of the Yoshin. If you don't reveal the character, you cannot then build it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so moving on. Um Pai Sensei, um there was a time between Koganai Dojo and OTI Dojo, both running at the same time. Yes. What was that like? That was uh, interesting because generally we would be uh, <laughs> every week there would uh, the main instructor. So generally it would be uh, Chida Sensei or uh, or any you know, other senior instructor, and one of us would be either me or Ando Sensei or somebody else would go. So we would spend a week. Uh, together. So generally it'll be just training and there'll be very few students, there'll be only two or three students. So it's very, it was, would be very frequent that uh, we spend uh, just training the two, the instructor would train together. So I would pair with Chida uh, Sensei or somebody and do all the class together. And uh, because there was no student. And every night we would go for a drink until uh, Late and uh, we would uh, smell uh, alcohol when we start the class to, in the morning. That would be the routine. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you saw the progression, right? Yeah. For me, I, I'd go back to Hombu every every few years, and I saw the difference from when I first went to the Koganai Dojo to Ochi mm -hmm. and, and down, and it changed. the The intensity change. Yes. Uh, the techniques stayed the same, but the way of teaching changed as well. Yes. Uh, it was still strict, but what, I, I have people asking, what do you think about the training in the old days as now? Well, yeah, because uh, OTI was different because people first couldn't leave so, there. Sorry, but say, okay, we'll do three things, yeah? Koganai Dojo, OTI, and you now. Okay. okay. So that comparison. Okay. Well, like I said, um, the, the the training was completely different. It's it's. Uh, I think the the Kogane time was a spirit training. I think it was a, the Yoshin Yoshin of Yoshin time. That was really for me was a spirit training, and the Ochi I was uh, uh, Ochi I for me. I was lucky in the sense because I left uh, I left in eighty five. So when we well, just just about this time of shift when we moved to when they closed uh, Kogane and moved to Ochi, and uh, so I had a, a lot of time to think about so, because what I was shocked because when I when I went I trained these five years okay I would I did the class many times with the, with the police and I thought I was I was good. And I went to France, but in France there was no Aikido. The Mugunza was in Paris, but it was very small, and I live in Lyon, so it was far. So I there was no students, so there was no people to train with. So I went back to the with the karate people uh, I used to train with before. And I honestly I I was really 
I, I don't know what to do because I couldn't make a one 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 technique works on this guy because they didn't know about okay like you know and if you tell them you, you know you have to put this knee this knee down and move like that they would laugh at me yeah and they would say you know why you open your finger like that if I kick you what do you do uh, so I uh, I just that was a really a big shock for me and I had to really to reset everything and see how I could make up Aikido apply that makes work on somebody who doesn't know anything about Aikido and uh, how I could rebuild my confidence working with this guy and uh, so and I worked through that and I went to England I taught in England but somewhere somewhere I was not very far satisfied because uh, you know I uh, I, I, I didn't have confidence really for that. So, and when I when uh, Shurasense went for the last time in Germany or for the last demonstration in Germany, I talked to him. I said, him, I said, you know, I train all this time, but I can't make one one, one simple technique works. And uh, so there's something wrong with me, but um, I can't. So, and I said, I want to go back to Japan, and 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 we start from scratch. Because I said probably I did something wrong. I had to restart again. And would you accept me as a Lishi again? And he laughed and he said yes. So I came back. And when I came back, it was 1980, end of 88, so beginning of 89. And at this time, he was already an, an older guy. And uh, so what I did, I done. I said okay, what I've done until now was good, but he, I did something wrong. So I just, I just. Close my my eyes. I would not listen. So it was a terrible time because people was uh, upset with me because I didn't listen to any of the instructor over there. I would just watch to Kancho and 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 I and I want and I and I did what you know what you should not do. That I mean you know you can't go straight to to your teacher. Mm -hmm. You have to go to your senpai and things like that. So but I, I didn't have time and uh, and he was getting old anyway. So I went go straight to him, and he, I was surprised because he was just lonely. So he just wanted to talk naturally, talk normally with somebody. So he would, you know, call me all the time, and we would have just normal, normal conversation. And I learned from that, just being with him and just walking to, to try to observe what he was doing. And I just realized that he, what he was doing is was completely different than what anybody else. So he was doing the, there was completely different things. Yeah. yeah. So. So we spoke about this many years ago, yeah. uh, and you 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 went against the trend because the old thing in the Oshinkan is once you leave as a uchideshi, you don't come back. Yes, I'm, I think I'm the only one who came back. Yeah. Yep. Um, and and uh, then also not I'm not mentioning names, but not doing what the Shuseki Shihan wanted. Yes. Yes. But you went to straight to the Kancho or it's okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that, you know, Kancho must have liked you because otherwise they would have kicked you out. Huh? Yes, I think so. Yeah, but they, they couldn't do anything because Kancho always called me. It was, sometimes it was uh, quite embarrassing because I would uh, teach in class and I was, you know, teaching a class and he would call me and say, bring me here, let somebody else teach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. Look, I from what I understand, right? In the old days, Kancho Sensei would set the agenda, set the yeah. the riai, yeah, and he left it to the shihans to set the technique. Yes, yeah. Um, but I've seen, I have manuals where Kancho Sensei does every kihon waza, every step. Yeah, but he never taught it, though. Yes, he never taught it. He let he let uh, he instructor teach. Yeah. And 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 for the, from the time I was there, they would they would demonstrate the technique, and he would they would always go, go uh, to him and ask for advice. So if it was okay, and I've never heard him say no, say something, say a comment or something a negative comment. Everything was fine. But I said, when, when did? Because I remember in 1983, Kancho was still teaching the Ipan classes. Yes. When did he stop? Um, yes, he was teaching at least uh, once or twice a week, yeah. Mm. And he was doing at least two black belt class a week. 
So I think he stopped um, probably in early 90. Yeah. 90, uh, 90 yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so just moving on now. Um, we're getting to some complicated areas now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I got so many questions here from people, but I, I'm sorry, people, I can't, we can't get through all the questions. Um, there's some people writing comments and questions. Maybe we'll forward that to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Raphael from Poland. Yes. Uh, he, he's got two questions, but okay. Yes. One, he said that, um, he was UK once and he couldn't, he didn't know what you were doing. He just, he looked at the demonstration later and he said the demonstration was bad because he felt he was a bad UK. Mm -hmm. and he just wasn't in tune with you. He didn't know what you were doing, what you wanted. He was lost. Yeah. So he says, do you need to have a good UK to do good Aikido? No, no, but I think, I think it's sad. It's sad because you, when you have a good UK, you can really give really 100% of yourself. But uh, I think that, you know, you should be able to do the technique on anybody. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and would that apply for training as well? Not just demonstration, but training as well? Uh, yeah, training is, you know, I think I, I, I told you that the, the things I've done in, in France where I couldn't get this uh, technique work because people didn't know okay. So now in my dojo, I don't teach really okay. Uh, I want my, my even my, my instructor. I want them to be able to do the technique, even if the UK, UK doesn't know anything. He, and after that, because you don't want to get uh, to get injured or thing like that, you, you, after that we teach we teach uh, beginners. If you do that, it'll be easier because you don't get uh, hurt. I think. Like but I'm not I'm not teaching really. You know, put your hands down, do like that, do this. Yeah. Uh, because I think you know it's it's just not real. You have to be able to, especially if you are, if you are uh, an instructor, you should be able to make the technique works. Okay. So a another question. Uh, this is uh, from Chris Johnson. Oops, I said his name. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris wants to know, like you know, is is um, is Aikido still a budo? Is it still a martial art? Uh, because in Aikikai now they say it is not a self-defense system. It's it's a non-aggressive martial art, whatever. He says, is Yoshinkan going the same way? Should it? Or should we pull back? What 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 do you think? Well, I think, I think, you know, we should be inclusive. I think every, I think because when I was in, uh, for example, personally, I don't like self-defense. But when I was in LA, uh, after the 9-11 uh, in, in LA, they asked me to to, uh, to help and to make a self-defense system to help the, the student. So I went to see Mitsu Mits Yamashita Sensei in LA. Yeah. And at this time, he was very much in boxing and uh, in uh, grappling because he, he was the first to uh, to help uh, the Gracie when they when they arrived in, in California. So uh, you know, so we we worked together to build up a system. So when you have a big guy sitting on you, what do you do? Uh, when you have a kick and punch, what do you do? Uh, and and plus, uh, I just realized that it's very easy, like you're doing. You're doing, I think you're doing a great job to just uh, applying, applying Yoshinkan technique. You know, uh, when you have the, 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 the basic, it's very easy to change a little and apply it. Uh, if you have a strong base, it's no problem. So I put the system in place and, uh, and I taught for yeah, one, year, one year and a half or something. So, and I, it was fun and I enjoyed and I learned a lot. But it's not my main thing. But I think if you if you really need it, I think it's it's wonderful, and you have to use it. You should you should. But uh, again, it should be you should be able to to use it when necessary. But in same time, you should be able to. For example, in my dojo, if if somebody comes and they want to do self defense, I'm very happy to accept him. If I have somebody who is very much in the intellectual way and you want to see key and, uh, and philosophy, I'm okay too. 
okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but you will have to do this on the side work <laughs> and work hard anyway. But uh, I will accept it. Yep. And uh, so I think, you know, that's why I don't like this, uh, this trend or, you know, Aikido should be like that. Uh, I think it should be very inclusive. And as us as, as leader, we don't want to be just a shibut show who thinks that's one way of doing things. I think everything should be Aikido, you know. Uh, but but if you uh, if you uh, but you should uh, really and also it's it's important to uh, to say because you see in Japan for example you know you know like me that many people study martial arts in Japan but they know just because they you know they want to do something uh, for health or for things like that they're never going to use it anything mm -hmm. but some, if you, if you if you're serious if you want really to be a, to be a teacher and you want to do Certainly, that must be a martial art, and that's be very serious in that. Uh, Chris, um, let me put something to you. Um, I asked Inoue Sensei some advice once, and I said to him that wherever I go, people wanted to learn um, Go Shinjitsu, they wanted to learn restraining techniques and stuff, but I would rather try and teach the along the, his lines. No, I can't teach like him, but along mm -hmm. his lines, yeah. or like Ida Sensei. Yeah. And Inoue Sensei said to me, you know, Joe, what you're doing is Aikido, what Chidashi Han is doing is Aikido, what I'm doing is Aikido, it's all Aikido, except yeah. that. Yeah. And I, I I thought it was a, a very bad answer when he mm -hmm. first told me. But a few years later, that's why when I left the Yoshinkan, I joined him, because he was accepting of different ideas, mm -hmm. and he said it's all Aikido. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's why, that's why and, I, and I think that's important for... Uh, uh, I think because I see some trends. For example, they say uh, you know some 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 there is the, the the strong aikido and there is a weak aikido. Okay, but for me, for example, uh, for example, I, I often hear that the, the golden age of Yoshinkan was in the seventies or the eighties. I think the golden age, yes, for the for the spirit, yes, but for the technical, I think. Kansho Shuratansi was much, much better in the 90s than he was in the, in the 60s or 70s or even 80s. I saw the progression. So, and I can say that uh, he was very, very high at the end of his life. And, and it, it, some, but it's difficult for, for people because, uh, because very few have, have really uh, been at his class. I just see the video today, but you know, uh, the only foreign, you know, for example, uh, Max, I was happy as the other day to see Master because he started to do some magic. Mm. You know, he, he, he say he say no, I won't do that. But uh, but you can see that what he's doing is what he's learned during the, the black belt class at the end of the of uh, yeah. you know, yeah. you know he, he got the influence for that. That's why you know there is this funny thing that he, he wants people to to laugh, for example. Mm. Okay, that's come from that. But not not that, but but because there is no there was no other choice. It, when you when you take a uh, okay for a country, you had to laugh anyway. You, you couldn't resist. And and also I, I see people say for the police, these people uh, for the police, they act they act for the police take okay. In this case, you have to say the same thing for all the, the Yoshinkan teacher. They, you should say that they are weak because they are all acted funny. I saw Chida uh, Sensei, Takeno Sensei, everybody acting funny. When they were to okay, okay, because that 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 what happened naturally. But that was only in the Kirobikai. Yes, yes. Only in the Kirobikai. Yeah, no, 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 and also in the, in the in the from I think from 89, 90, not before. Yeah. During the the Kirobikai in in the eighties, there was much more serious. Yes, and and I've never seen any of his deshi laugh in a demonstration. No. No, you can't. That was <laughs> you can't. But but for the Krubikai, because I think I think at the end of his life he wanted to pass something else. Mm. Uh, he want, he really wanted us to get something. Uh, and and that's why I, I'm very, I was very happy to see that uh, uh, Master Sensei was, was trying to get, and I hope he will he will open more and got safer because for me. The real Aikido is soft. You can't have a, a strong Aikido with bangs like that. I did Jiu Jitsu before. I know what is a, I, I know how to hurt people. I know how to, you know, bounce somebody. It's all of that easy. 
but make through somebody with zero, almost zero strength, just by breaking the balance and in such a way that he falls by himself, that for me is that master. That's what I want to do. I don't want to throw somebody using my horse. Uh, anyway, I'm small and I'm getting old. So, and, yeah. I, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm not going to spend, uh, you know, 40 years to, to, to do that. I want, before I, I, before I die, to be able to, not, not the not the no-touch things, of course. <laughs> I want to touch them, but with very little strength. And I want to be able to throw them ex more, even more, more uh, effectively than well, with it. From talking to you, Ukes, I think you're doing it already. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm far from that. But I think, because I think our duty, and you included, because we've been to, to Kogane, we've seen, we've been okay for Kancho. So we, we know what it is and we have to get uh, this feeling and try to pass it because i think aikido is going to die because you don't you can't you can't you know if you want to become a machine if you want to become a fighter don't come to to, to the aikido do there's some beautiful art okay but aikido should bring i think hope okay i think you need hope well, well i i continue aikido because after I do the all the, the, the thing at the dojo, even if I get if I think that I go to the black belt and I got I got you know some some inspirations and hope, and I, that's why I can't I can't quit. Hmm. But we need some we need that I yeah. think and 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 it's only because those who really felt that who can give that because otherwise it's if you didn't feel it it's impossible you can't you don't know what what to expect. Okay, now I need I need a short answer on this one. Okay. <laughs> uh, someone's asked, what do you think about a teenager becoming an uchideshi? Uh, stuff, you've seen uh, what happened to uh, Mark and Andy, yeah? Mm, yeah. So I think this should be certain some kind of maturity. Uh, I, last, last year, two years ago, I got too, uh, too young, again, I think it was 18, and uh, after three days, they uh, they wanted to go back home. Yep. So I think you need some uh, some maturity. Yeah. I, I agree. Now, um, going back to being an uchideshi, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to make a statement here, and then you can correct me or okay. disagree, agree, whatever. Right. So now, I see a lot of people with uchideshi, both inside and outside Japan. Mm -hmm. And the uchideshi seem to think either they want they become like an uh, a, an auntie or a, a a wet nurse for their teacher. They try and um, look after the teacher a little too much. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one thing. And then we get other deshi who mm -hmm. teach, treat their teachers like gods, but mm -hmm. when they meet someone else who is another teacher, they'll go, "Hi, Joe. How are you?" Yeah, yeah. So you get the two extremes. Of course, everything's about balance and stuff, but it really annoys me. I was dealing with a Japanese teacher. Uh, I'm not mentioning names, but you probably guess. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was very senior, but I've known him since 1983. And his deshi treated me like I didn't know how to look after him. I brought this teacher to Australia three, four times. Okay. Yeah. And he, he, you know, it's good to be a deshi, but you need to know who you're talking to as well. Yes. yes. And then on the other hand, you get, um, you know, John Marshall's big bug about this. Mm -hmm. you know, everyone, if, if you're Nidan and Japanese, you're a sensei. Mm -hmm. But you're a Shihan, but you're Caucasian, it's hi, John. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> can you shed some light on this or just your opinion? Yeah. But... So. I think it's it's yeah because uh, I think if they if they been to, if it was at Kogane Dojo I think that would not happen. Mm. So uh, so we the same it's uh, it's it's hard one yeah it's very hard um, so that's why I would change the the the, the, the situation but. 
that's why this idea, this trend also today that, you know, the level is too low and uh, and people, you know, they give away the rank and see that. And now see that, but I think maybe one one idea is to is to give a separate separate rank maybe for the instructor. If you want to be an instructor, you have to to know a minimum of things, the etiquettes and uh, uh, history, and you have to know uh, and you have to, to to make sure you have a very very solid foundation because you are responsible. You are responsible for what you're teaching. And you can't just you can't just teach anything like that you have, because people will follow you. You have to be an example for everybody. So, and I think that's one one way of solving the problem because I don't I have no idea or I have no no problem you know to because you know even in my dojo some people you know they they are older and they come only once a week but they, they, they really like love that but physically they are weak and you know and they they, they work they, they come. But you know, and I give them the 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 grade because you know, I, if I see that they make some effort, that's fine. But I, I would not want them to, to be a teacher and to. And, and, and people think I'm a, I'm a hard ass, but I think they just see one side of me. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I use this. Uh, I use this. I, example, right? In my uncle's dojo, there was a guy who started training and he lost a leg in an accident. Mm -hmm. So he had only one leg. Now, do you want him to do right kamai or left kamai? Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and does that mean that he shouldn't train? He, mm -hmm. when, when I used, when I trained in Kogane, in the Ipang class, I used to have this partner who had a, a hand was like this. Yes. And, and we would do stuff like Tenshinage, I would be his partner and Takeno Sensei would come around and say, you do it like this and tell him, modify the technique for him. And and I learned a lot from uh, from little things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we, it's not one size fits all. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Uh, it's just so much. So <laughs> so much. <laughs> And I, I even forgot, I had a good question, but I forgot. Look, so let's go on to, can, in 1990, yes. um, Kancho Sensei, Shoda Gozo Kancho said, okay, you know, we start the IYF. Yes. And then it changed to AYF and it's going through changes now. And now John Marshall Sensei has started a, a fellowship group. Yes. So can you shed some light? 1990, what was the idea behind the IYF first? Yes, uh, in 1990, there were there was really the the, the old tradition thing. So you had uh, one country, one one uh, king. So you had one teacher for what country, and uh, nobody could have direct link with the Hongu. So that was that could be good in some country, but in some country. Uh, because there was no way to, um, to uh, it was not a dem democratical thing. So some, some teacher would just would try to uh, never grade a student. So you had a student who spent uh, 20 years and he was on a shodan or nidan. And, uh, and so, and it was almost impossible to open a dojo without the authorization of the, of the national person. In the and so we've heard Many and many people start to come to Japan in, in they start with ninety and we hear the, all these things and they say can we can you help us because uh, we would like to you know to to be able to to have more communication with Japan and we want we would like to we've been twenty years with with our teacher we like him but we want to open our dojo but he won't let us authorization uh, to do that so we thought maybe there is a, it's time to uh, we talk to Kancho. And he said, oh, uh, there's no reason why anybody cannot talk to me directly. And he said, uh, do, you, do you have a, an idea? What can we do? And uh, at the time, it was Mark Baker and there was Fred Haynes. And they started to. Sorry, people. Um, Fred Haynes and I are no longer friends, but I give credit where credit's due. Fred Haynes was 
have played a big, big part yeah. in setting the game. Yeah. Instrumental. So listening, Fred, thank you. Yeah, so he's uh so he he you know he makes this by low and things like that and makes sure that you know uh anybody who is uh, from Shodan and up can open the dojo and they can have direct and direct link to the to, so and because of that suddenly well, there's a lot of dojo open and uh, in in this sense it was good for Yoshika because there was a, we we seen a lot of growth. But in the same time uh, and it was okay at the beginning because people were wanted really to learn and they would make a lot of effort and do that. But, uh, but after a while, uh, because um, uh, when she was and she passed away, there was no, there was no really control or anything. So uh, there was kind of inflation. Everybody can be, can grade anybody and uh, you have to just, you can pay and you can get your grade. And uh, so that's uh, so we are kind of opposite situation now. Before it was uh, very authoritarian and there was no no freedom, and now it's too much freedom. And and what do you think about the the, the re reduced timelines between grades? So I I, I think can, can, sorry, Paisen said, can I ask you how long yeah. between your Godan and Rokudan? Uh. Actually, I didn't pass my Lokudan. I, I uh, jumped, I think, because uh, it was something like 20 years or something. And so they said that uh, you've been, you, <laughs> we forgot you, so just, you know. 20 years from Godan to Nanadan. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, and after I got seven Dan, and after that, a few years later, they, they told me, you know, apply for it. Then I said, why not? Okay. Mm. But, but what do you think about the, the shortened timelines? Mm, I think uh, for me, for me, the rank is just like a license, a driving license. It's not because you have a driving license that you are your best, you are the best uh, driver. Okay, uh, it just it just allowed you to 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 uh, to to work through the, the, the things that you really earn your your rank and you really deserve it before you take the, the other one. So okay. that. If I use your analogy, right? Yeah. To get your driving license, you got to qualify certain things. You got you got to do certain things. You got to, in Australia, if you want to get your probationary license, you have to do 120 hours of driving as a learner. Mm -hmm. there, there's there's a time, but there's also experience. Yeah, but but again, it, it's very difficult because some people would, would for example, my dojo, some people would come every day. And they are young and they, they train. So uh, in one year, they are very good uh, shodan. But some people who come only once a week and they are older and they're not very eager. So for them, it would take, uh, even if they train for 10 years, I'm not sure I want to give them the shodan. And, and that's fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the, the thing is that there has to be a, a baseline. Yes, yes. A baseline uh, yeah. guideline. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I, I don't know if the guideline here is good or not. Uh, you can, probably you can make it a little uh, more difficult, but optimally it's, it's up to the instructor. You have to trust your, the instructor that he's uh, honest and he can, he knows his student. And he, if, if a, uh, when I go somewhere and, and the instructor recommends the, the student, so I will watch him at the, at the seminar and uh, if I, you know, I will give him some advice, but if uh, the instructor recommends, I will generally pass him. If he, if he you know, I, I I'm the firm belief that a, a, a grade or a certificate is a, is a agreement or a compact between the teacher and the student. Yes. Nothing yes. else. Yes. So when Inoue Sensei gave me my ASTA and I refused it, uh, then he gave it to me in public, and I I had to accept. Mm -hmm. um, there were people who said. Uh, Dotan was not worth the S done. And I said, I agree, but you tell him. Yeah. It's not it's not my call. Yeah. I agree, I'm not worth the S done. You mm. ask him. Yeah. So I think, but that's where the in, the teachers need to take uh, responsibility. The text, of, yes. I agree, yes. And the thing is that there is no, I, I find when I ask people, why did you give someone a six dan or a seventh dan or why did you make someone a shihan? There is no answer. Yeah. 
So and this, this is the problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Yes. So I think, and that's why I think, I think um, uh, with John uh, Marshall initiative that we can we can get into an, uh, an agreement on that to make things better. So do you want to elaborate on that, please? Yeah, yeah. I think if uh, because now it's time because for me in the old time it was easy because there was if you have a scale of one to ten you had all the instructor here and Count Shu was a, uh, was the instructor was at one and Shu that say was at ten so there was no no problem if there is any question in the city would say that and nobody would question what he's doing and uh, things would, be, would go straight today there is no more moral uh, or technical i would say uh, authority so mm -hmm. for example you know if if now with, with uh, and i don't say that to in to disregard to anybody but it's just a reality you know today uh, the teacher who alive today they are almost the same level for example uh you know if I a if I there was a technical decision to do to do i would listen to you or to robert mustard or all the teacher in japan they are about the same so i don't i don't i would not prefer one or the other just different yes. yeah yeah but there's no there's no you know huge gap that it used to before so now today it's very difficult to have somebody at, uh, at the top because you know everybody's about the same they have all their own experience and uh, so that's why that's why from the for this initiative for john it's uh, i'd say it's difficult because it's just like a, a big family you're in a big family okay so if everybody's on the summer roof for a long time they're going to fight each other okay even if they love each other but they're going to fight so, but if they meet only once a year, okay, uh, they, they, they drink together, do something together, and uh, because, and uh, if somebody needs some help, they will be, or will be there. But, so we need some space, okay? We, everybody is teacher today has need some space. But, but we can, we can, for example, uh, uh, for example, uh, do a seminar sometimes together, like we did. They can also uh, once a year go do a demonstration together. Hmm. Okay, uh, I think that that's that that realistic. I think we can do that, and that's so, good. For Michigan. Everyone, from my point of view, I want to add to what Pai Sensei said, and I would like that. I would like to have some sort of a. I'm no longer in the Ocean Khan organization, mm -hmm. but I'm a fan of the Ocean Khan. Uh, I would like to see the different teachers saying, okay, we will respect each other's testing. Yeah. Goals. Yes. And yeah. you can take it further. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, if um, I send Pai Sensei, my student at Nidan, he said, okay, you can keep your Nidan, but you're hopeless. So your Sandan will be 10 years from now, but <laughs> still, you respect where they're at. Yes. That, that's the baseline. We're talking baseline. Yeah. Um, the other thing too, and this might be a problem, but the ability to say you can use the, the name Yoshinkan system of Aikido. Yes. Might be a problem. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Pai Sensei, uh, this is going to get a bit sticky. Okay. So yeah. In any martial art organization, when the top teacher passes away, yes. Usually it fragments. Yes. Like Kyok Kyokushin and all, all these fragments. In Yoshinkan, after Kancho Sensei passed away, it stayed together for 14 years. Yes. Only one or two dojos left. 14 years it stayed together. Then um, uh, Shoda Yasuhisa comes in and it just goes, <laughs> okay. Uh, now, <laughs> can you comment on that, please? <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, Shoda Yasuhisa Sensei is a, is a special case, but uh, and I know I'm not a fan of him, but. And, and I know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about him. But for me, it's, um, it's difficult for me to, <laughs> to critique him really much because, uh, uh, because, because without him, I wouldn't be at the dojo. 
as a dojo is very traditional. If you want to become a uchidechi, you need to be uh, introduced by somebody. So all the, the teacher they were introduced by somebody. But me, I just happened to to go there and he talk, I talked with him and he just took me straight to Shogasan's office. And nobody was aware of anything. So he went directly and he said, okay, you can become Uchideshi. So without without him, I would not be here. That's one thing. And after that, in um, I think in uh, when was that? Was mm, 2007 or eight when he took over when he was a council. Yeah, out of the blue because at this time I, I uh, many people doesn't know that but I was I was I didn't want to be part of the Yoshinkan anymore. So I I just uh, actually I even sometimes I was thinking about not teaching because I, I was working. So I was thinking about just you know do a small dojo for myself and train with some just for myself, but not as a as an organization. So I didn't join the Yoshinkan. So I, the Mugen Juku was an independent uh, club or something. Yep. So, uh, but out of the blue, uh, Yasui Sa called me and he said, you know, I want to do like a little like Aikikai. I want the, the, the old teacher to come back and help at the home. Would you do that? So I think he called Ando Sensei, he called me, he called uh, Oyamada Sensei and others. And uh, he put some, uh, because he said it would be good for, for the dojo to like Aikikai to get the, the the other instructor to come and help and you know, they will have their class. So once a month I would go there and have my class there and teach the police. And I thought that was quite a part of initiative because I don't think the the, the other uh, the other uh, Japanese would, would come up with such an idea. Mm -hmm. So there was some positive thing over there. There were some terrible things too like uh, he did the 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 embu with the show <laughs> with the talk and yeah yeah thing. so that is, there's two things I tell you Daigo Sensei was not happy no I don't, I don't think so <laughs> but there is some you know some some something from that that you know there is always good somewhere <laughs> uh, people um, Pai Sensei uh, you know he's very loyal. He's a loyal man. He's a loyal friend. And in his book, he thanks a lot of people. And if you want to know the debt of gratitude, he owes uh, Shiyoda Yasuhisa, uh, read the book. And it's not easy for him to say that. Yeah. <laughs> he also, you know, for me, I don't know how much loyalty is too much because um, he has a lot of loyalty to people like Fred Haynes, Jordan Reynolds, wow. people who've helped him. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I think maybe, you know, you're yeah. too loyal, but oh, yeah. let's leave that. Let's and, leave also, it. and also personally also, I know that Shura Sensei wanted him to be, to take over. Mm -hmm. But he, and, 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 uh, and, and I think that, that probably one of the reasons that uh, Shura Sensei passed away maybe a little too early because he was so worried about that. Uh, because everybody was against, and he knew that his, his son was hopeless, and uh, and he knew uh, there would be a lot of problem. But uh, but I think he really wanted him to take over, yeah. and he wanted yeah. the other, other instructor, the other teacher, to help. In, in 1993, when I did my Godan test, it was a very awkward time. Mm -hmm. Because Sensei was just sitting in the office, smoking. He wasn't teaching. Yeah, uh, it was that time when uh, Kancho Sensei wanted his son to come back. Yeah, and Sakurai came back to the dojo for a little while, and yeah. that would have been yeah. yeah. So it was a bad time. Um, you know, there were other bad times in the Yoshinkan history too. One day I'm going to talk about Yagi Sensei and, uh, and 1978. Yeah. But you know, look, if we want to understand where we are, we have to learn where we came from. Exactly. Yes. And it's very important. Uh, yeah, and I think it's it's our history. We mm -hmm. own it, good or bad. Yes, we own it. We own it. Yeah. And and a lot of things been swept under the carpet. 
Yeah. I, I want to talk to about the people before it's too late, mm -hmm. about the people who shape the Yoshingan technique. Kancho sensei, Kushira sensei, Inoue sensei, Yagi sensei, Takeno Chira sensei, all these people, you know, yeah. um, because it's our history, our evolution. Yes, yes. And, okay. and I think it's so important. Very and important. Sensei, can I ask you, we're running out of time. Can I ask you a question? Why have you got your doggy on? Because uh, it's a dojo, and it's uh, like I think you, you gave a, a good an answer the other day because saying that you know you it's if you if you are uh, working in a company you wear suits here we you work as a you know as a teacher so you wear your thing and and it, it's it's also it's a symbol so it's it's white and so he forced you to you know to to, to uh, maybe to be uh, to be more aware of what you're doing and what you're saying and how you make your life and uh, and you, yes it's a way to to be proud of what you're doing i have never seen you wear a dirty or sloppy doggy i've never seen takino sensei chira sensei robert mustard sensei ando sensei i've never seen any of you guys wear a sloppy or dirty doggy yeah, I think that you know that you have to you have to when you have to always do because it's 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 it show where you are who you are okay so that's that's very important it's it's a, it's a surface for what you decide so if you wear something. Uh, dirty that means you know you don't know what's it inside huh? uh, so people please read Pai Sensei's book oh sorry here yeah. it, it's a good read and we only just touch touch bits of it I, I don't I'm not here to to read the book out to you I just want you to know that the book out the book is out there and it's the things that are unwritten in the book uh, in in three months in the Yoshinkan in Kogane the time I was hurt the most was waiting for Kancho Sensei to drive up. <laughs> Lining up out the front, you can ask Pai Sensei this, ask Robert Mustard Sensei this, that's when you got hurt. <laughs> because all the teachers would experiment on you. Um, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't tell stories, but uh, <laughs> Pai Sensei, um, before we finish, yes, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's a bad time now. And, and you know, I, I hate doing online stuff. Mm -hmm. but we're in a special time, special place. Do you have any advice for people in this time and space or anything they can practice while they, while we're waiting for normalcy? Yeah. Again, like I, I said, I thought a little about that, but I think when you are at the dojo, you, you train, uh, you train, for example, on the basic, but you don't have time really to to go deep in that. Think about why you're doing that, and uh, uh, so when you're by by yourself, you have time like that. You can do uh, you can do any a movement, hiriki or say or or kamae or whatever, and try to see if why people tell you that. What 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 and try to find a way you know where you can you can make your your own thing. Me personally, I, I've, uh, I, I work on that, uh, how to work in Kamae and do Cesar, for example, and see where is my weak point. So if, if I'm a little balance there or there, if I do like that, I what's the difference. So there's many things you can work on yourself, on uh, not, not through special uh, movement or anything, but anything you do, but try to see it in a different, different perspective and uh, to work a little on your side, inside, what's happening to your body when you do that, if you have tension, or thing like that, and uh, and when you come back to training, that would, I think that would be very beneficial. Awesome. Sensei, um, where, how can people buy the book? Uh, inside, you have the, um, you have, uh, you can buy that at shindokanbooks.com. Well, if they don't have the book, they can't look inside. That's true. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. www.shindokanbooks.com. 
Okay, all right. And and there will be a link on Aikido Shudokan page or this page uh, for where you can get the book. And then um, get Jacques Pai to sensei to sign it next time you see him and ask yeah. him if he's paid me my commission. Okay, great. Okay. If, I, if, you, if I have just in my one minute to add something. Yes, uh, please. Uh, I was thinking about uh, John's uh, sensei's initiative, but when I was uh, back in the dojo in 2000. Seven, I think. Uh, for a short time, they put me as a kind of to help with uh, with uh, international affairs. And what uh, I was thinking about, and I think now it would work for now, because the Japanese, the, the, for the Japanese dojo inside Japan, domestic, we have to pay uh, a yearly fee for each student. So each dojo has to pay a certain amount uh, to to the, to the hombu to use the Yushinkan name and to help the home. But, and at this time, they were thinking about trying to extend that overseas, ask all the dojo overseas to do that. But uh, there, was a, there was a lot of uh, people who say they don't want to, 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 to pay because they don't get anything in return and things like that. There was a lot of discussion on that. So uh, they abandoned the, the, the search. But I think now, because we are in a, in a period of crisis, I think that would be actually a great idea I don't know how to do that, but for example, having a, each student to pay a little fee, but make that as an insurance, for example, for this time and this time of crime, set up when dojo, when dojo suffers a lot, they don't have any revenue or anything. So it could be a kind of, of uh, uh, fund that can be used to help dojo overseas. So for example, each dojo will pay, but they would not give that all to, do, to the homeboys, they would they don't know. Maybe a percentage will go to the homebrew, 20 percent, I don't know. But the rest would be uh, keeping uh, keeping in the, in a farm somewhere. And when 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 people are, uh, are in crisis, that can help. So that could be a thing that we can uh, uh, a new initiative that can really be good for everybody. It's a great idea, Pai Sensei. Um, I, I hope it doesn't go the way of the old IYF money, though. <laughs> yeah. So that's, Sorry, that's people. A, I had to add that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Even Miranda Sensei, thank you for putting up the website where you can get the books. www.shindokanbooks.com. Also proudly brought to you by Aikido Yoshinkan Sendokan Dojo. Um, everyone, Pai Sensei, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Thank for you the for pleasure. the And people, I could talk to Pai Sensei for like um, you know hours and hours. Yeah. Now, that's you, really you, <laughs> before, I let, before I let Pai Sensei go, there is one question from Robert Mustard Sensei. Yes. I have to ask this. Yes. Who's better looking, him or me? Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, good. I, I appreciate that. Uh, okay, everyone, just keep the flame alive. Uh, and, you know, I, I thought of that just, I was having a beer for a change and I just thought, oh, keep the flame alive. But for me, now it's really starting to mean something. We, we, we're stoking the flames, we're keeping the flames of Yoshinkan Aikido alive. And for people like Pai Sensei and me, it's our life. Yes. It's not just what we do, it's our life, it's who we are. Okay. Um, next week, it's my turn. Okay. So throw in your questions and please don't make it soft. Give me the hard questions. Uh, I'm going to do a QA and hopefully I can visualize or I will try and visualize my answers. So I'll be on the mats. You ask a question, someone's going to put it to me, and I might answer it verbally. I might say, okay, with an okay, this is what my answer is. Um, you want to know what that's going to look like? Hey, tune in next week. Bye, Sensei. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Really oh, appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.